Hello students! Today we're going to talk about parts of the cell. Now I could go through a list of about 15 different parts and have you try to memorize them all, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on a few specific parts and the reason I'm going to focus on them is because they will build on things that you're going to learn and need to know about in the next two or three years of your school. The first two parts we're going to study today are the cell wall and the cell membrane. Let's try this with an egg. This is a type of cell. It's not an organism. It is mostly a cell. It has the outer layer. It's got the inside cell membrane. It's got a lot of the pieces that a cell would have, but it's not fertilized. It's not a complete organism. For our purposes today, we can use it to explore features of the cell wall and features of that cell membrane. Two key words that we need to learn about today are osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion is something spreading out over an area. Diffusion can be demonstrated with a cup of water. If I just put a drop of food coloring in here, you can see that the food coloring comes down first in a big blob, and then it starts to spread out and spread out and spread out. And if we wait long enough, it will spread out to the whole cup of water evenly until the whole water is blue. This is called diffusion, traveling and spreading out over an area. Osmosis, on the other hand, I can demonstrate with my tea. I've got some hot water here and I put my tea bag in. The mesh of the tea bag is the membrane and the particles of tea that are inside that membrane are traveling through the membrane by osmosis. The osmosis is sending them through the membrane and they are going to fill up the rest of my tea with some delicious tea flavored water. Chili daddy. <laughs> So let's do an experiment. We're gonna call this the naked egg experiment. And we are using our egg. This is a raw egg, a fresh egg. We're gonna use it as a model for how a cell and a cell's membrane works. First thing you wanna do if you're working on an experiment like this, we're gonna think about the outside shell as the cell wall that some organisms have. If you're a bacteria, if you're a plant, you have a cell wall. If you're an animal like you and me, uh, you don't have a cell wall. Inside that cell wall is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is something that all cells have, whether you're a plant, an animal, bacteria. So for the naked eggs experiment, these are the materials that you'll need. Our first step, we're going to take the egg and we're gonna take some vinegar. We're gonna put them together in a jar. So first, let's get a jar, jar, get some vinegar, vinegar, a fresh raw egg, some tape to mark on the jar so that we know what's in the jar, and a pen to write with. First thing I wanna do, I wanna weigh the egg and find out how much this egg weighs. Could my assistant, can you get the scale for me? And we're going to weigh this egg. So we've got a little kitchen scale here. How much does the egg weigh? 61. 61 what? G, the little G stands for grams. Grams. 61 grams, okay, let's make a note. 61 grams. Now we're going to put the egg in a jar that's gonna have vinegar. It's important to have a jar with a lid on it. It helps to control your experiment. Now vinegar is acidic. Vinegar is an acid that will dissolve the shell of the egg. Vinegar is an acid of a pH of about two, two and a half to three. So I want to put the egg and the vinegar in the same jar. If I put the vinegar in first, I'll have to drop it in. That might break the egg. So I'm going to very gently put the egg into the jar, all the way down to the bottom. Like that. I'm going to pour some vinegar in here, laying it on the table. See, it's not splashing around. No. I'm going to pour just enough vinegar to cover the egg. And I'm going to put the lid on the jar of the vinegar, and we are going to wait. Bubbles forming on the egg are showing the chemical reaction of dissolving the calcium carbonate. So it's very interesting. The vinegar soaked egg has lost all of its shell, but it has swelled up to the point that it won't come out of the jar right now. I wonder if it absorbed some of the vinegar into the egg itself. It's a little squishy, bounces around a little rubbery, but what we've reduced it down to is the membrane, like a cell membrane. It is a flexible, squishy membrane that's containing the egg, which is like our model of a cell. I'm going to mass it, find out how much it weighs now. Including the jar, it is now 300 grams. 
Later we can measure the weight of the jar and subtract that to find out how much the egg weighs here. I wish we could take it out to weigh it, but we can't because it's stuck. Next step, add water to it. Filtered water. Best if you have distilled water. This is water out of my refrigerator that has some filtered. Pour some water in here. And then we'll have to change the label to show that it's water. Started this three days ago. Put the egg into a jar of vinegar. Soaked it in vinegar for a couple of days, took it out, the shell had soaked off of it. And the egg itself had swollen up just a little bit to the point that it couldn't come out of the jar, which surprised me. Then I put it into water, water from the fridge. So it had gone through a filter, it was pretty clean water. And the egg swelled up. How big that got. This, you might think, is the magnification of the jar or something. No, that is the egg, the egg swallow. Now, this is what the egg was like before. These are the two eggs side by side. Really a big difference. So we're going to pour out this water and I'm gonna fill something else in the jar for our, our last part of the experiment. Pour out the water and you'll notice the egg is not coming out of the jar, but it is still squishy. So I can, I can, I can squish it. The cell membrane, that membrane is still holding on to the contents of the egg. And right now it's osmosis has allowed water to go through that membrane filling up that cell. That's where the cell wall comes in to protect the cell. See, if a cell is absorbing too much water, it can actually swell to the point that it will burst, and that's not good for the organism. So plants have cell walls so that they don't absorb too much water, so that they don't burst. And now I'm gonna fill it up with pancake syrup. Sweet! Now what's going on in this situation? When we dissolved the shell from the egg, we were allowing that membrane, the inner membrane, to get larger. It could be, it could move larger, it could go smaller. One of the purposes of the cell wall, just like the eggshell, the purpose of it is to hold that cell into its shape. When we put it in water, the osmosis, the process of letting nutrients or whatever's gonna go in through it, in and out of the cell membrane, allowed water to go into the cell because it, saw, it noticed that it had more water on the outside of the cell than on the inside of the cell. And the cell wants to balance that. The cell wants to have an equal amount of water on the inside and the outside. Trying to balance that by sucking some water in. Now, what do you predict is going to happen when we put it in syrup? On the outside of the cell, there's not going to be any water, but where's the water in this situation? The jar is full of syrup, not water, but where's the water? The water's on the inside of that cell, inside that egg. What do you think is going to happen? So now we're in the last stage of our experiment. The last day, I'm opening up the jar. I'm going to find out what happened to the egg after it was soaked in pancake syrup. Pour out the syrup into... Whoa! I made a mess. I'm not going to touch this with my fingers because it's kind of gross. But here is the egg. So it has shriveled enough that it comes out of the jar. Remember all that water that soaked into the egg through the cell membrane? Osmosis recognized that there was more water inside the egg than there was outside of the egg. And in trying to make that balance, the water that was inside the egg went out into the syrup and left inside the egg anything that wasn't water. Weigh it to find out what its mass is. The mass of the egg now is 47 grams. And going back to weigh the mass of the jar, mass of the jar, 248 grams. The way a cell membrane works is it is a layer that has a lot of different things stuck into that layer. And depending on the size of the openings, we call these protein channels, different things could fit in and different things could get blocked. Molecule, the size of this right here, and it's not gonna be able to go in through here. It can't go through here. It can't go through here. It even gets stuck in this one. But sometimes it's to the, not just the size, but the shape. So here we have a rock that is still too wide to fit through here, but if it fits into just the right shape, it goes through. Some things will travel through automatically and some things will need to have a little bit of help and the protein channel will change its sh shape to push things through from one side to the other. These protein channels are important for big molecules like say sugar, but if you're looking at a small molecule like water, water is actually tinier than the tiny little grains in the cell membrane. So the water molecule can just travel straight through that membrane, anywhere in that membrane, by osmosis.